My name's Martin Keane. And I'm Trent Musho from The Brew Show. And together we're taking on the curious beer style of Sati. While I get ready for Brew Day, Trent, over to you to explain what this beer style is all about. Sakti is a farmhouse style beer that hails from Finland and has a brewing tradition dating back about 500 years if not longer. Typically brewed for festivities like weddings, this ale is a rite of passage for a lot of Finnish home brewers and a few breweries around Finland. But Sakti has never really picked up international fame. It may be because of its short shelf life, maybe it's the unique brewing techniques, or maybe it's because of its distinctive ingredients. Whatever it is, the information about this brew is pretty sparse. I struggle to even find a commercial example here in Los Angeles. Dogfish Head has made a version of this before, but in order to learn more about this style, I had to do some deep diving to find out more about this mysterious beverage. One of the reasons the information on the style is a bit cloudy is because there's a lot of variations to how it is traditionally brewed, and it really depends on who you ask or where you read about it. Most of the recipes for the style were passed down in families, so every recipe is a little different. But in general, there are four key components that make up a sati. First, it primarily consists of pilsner or pale malt with a portion of the grain bill being rye, usually a caramel rye, and this can be anywhere from 50 to 40% of the total grist. Second, one of the key flavor impacts is the use of juniper instead of hops, usually branches of the common juniper, but berries are also used as well. Hops are sometimes used, but not as common. Third is the lack of boil when making the beer. It goes straight from the mash to the fermenter. And lastly, the use of baker's yeast to ferment gives it an estery and slightly acidic finish. The traditional way to brew sakti is by using a kurna, which is a trowel-shaped mash tun that has juniper branches laid across the bottom, followed by grains and water. The wort is heated by placing scalding hot rocks in the mash that caramelize the wort and add flavor, as well as raise the temperature for starch conversion, and then the wort is directly moved into the fermenter after mashing. Fermentation is then achieved by adding a finished baker's yeast or whatever house strain of yeast the family keeps to brew. The resulting beer is a thick, piney ale with notes of caramel and pronounced banana esters, and is usually quite strong, anywhere from 7 to 11%. I don't think Martin has a giant tree to knock down and build a kurna, so I think we're going to need to get a little more creative and put a modern twist on this brew. For the grain bill, we're not going to stray too far from the recommendations. The majority of the grains used will be Pilsner, 70% and 20% Munich malt for some added bready complexity. Lastly, we'll be adding about 10% of rye to round out the malts. And since it's not prime juniper season, we'll just be adding in juniper berries. But if you have the branches, go for that. Just keep in mind that some varieties of juniper are actually poisonous, so stick with the common juniper to be safe. And if you're unsure, just leave it out altogether. Lastly, we'll also be straying from tradition with the yeast. In order to have a more predictable fermentation, we'll be using a farmhouse ale yeast, Kuvike specifically Espy, which is a Nordic farmhouse yeast. The hope is that this farmhouse ale yeast will bring fruity esters, but a fairly clean fermentation profile to not get in the way of the juniper character. But if you're looking to keep things more traditional, then go for baker's yeast instead. So that should be everything we need to get started. Now, let's brew. So let's get brewing this one. First thing, I heat up the strike water. This is going to be a long mash, and I'm adopting a step mash here to take advantage of conversion through multiple temperature ranges. First mash rest is 140 Fahrenheit, so I've heated my water to 147. To that, I'm adding some water salts to balance my filtered tap water. I'm adding 2 grams of gypsum, 3 grams of Epsom salt, and 5 grams of calcium chloride. This gives my tap water a nice balanced profile. Here's what I'm shooting for. I'm also adding 5 milliliters of lactic acid to balance my pH. I'm looking for a pH of between 5.2 and 5.4, and I'll check that in a moment. So first things first, it's in with the milled grain. I'm giving that a good stir with my giant whisk to make sure there are no lumps. If I remember, I'll periodically give the mash a quick stir through the mash rests. Now to the mash, I'm throwing in 5 grams of juniper berries. Atlantic Brew Supply found some of these out back. I'm throwing these straight into the mash basket. This really seems like a tiny addition that would make minimal difference, but we'll see. Juniper branches would be a first choice for the style, and if you can find them, throw in about 10 grams of branches with the berries attached. 
pH looks good, 5.4, so I'll not make any further adjustments. One hour later, it's time to bump up the temperature to 158 Fahrenheit. This is really easy on my claw hammer system. I just set a new temperature and let the heating elements cycle on and off to get to the temp. I'm holding here for 50 minutes, then I bump up to 176 Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. And that's it. At the end of the two hours, I pull the grain basket out. This is as hot as the worth is ever going to get. Sati is a raw ale, there's no boil. We want to conserve that juniper character as much as we can. I'm also not adding any hops, it's just straight to cool down. This is an absolute first for me, and quite honestly, it feels really weird. I've hooked up my plate to chiller and I'm bringing down the temperature to 85 Fahrenheit. 176 to 85 is not a whole lot, so this doesn't take long at all. I take a gravity reading and I'm at 1.069. I transfer into the fermenter and now it's time to add the yeast. I'm using Kvike Espe, a Nordic farmhouse yeast with fruity esters but a fairly clean fermentation profile to highlight the juniper character. I seal up the fermenter and keep this between 85 Fahrenheit to 90 Fahrenheit. Here the beer will sit for a couple of weeks before I'll cold crash, package and send a bottle to Trent for the tasting. So it's tasting time and I have Trent here virtually to taste it with me. Good to see you, Martin. We're not doing this in person. I'm on the East Coast, you're on the West. But we have got uh, both, we both have a beer from the brew day. I, I've mailed one across to California. So I'm really curious to see how this thing has arrived. <laughs> I am too. Is it still in one piece? <laughs> it is, it is, it made it. Let me pop it open and see how it looks. Yeah, yeah, let's see what it looks like. Still got some fizz. Oh, look at that. It's still fizzy. Beautiful. Yeah, it's quite appealing, isn't it, in terms of color? Yeah, like a light orange hue, kind of. Right, uh, mine is quite cloudy. Yeah, still. Mine's a bit hazy too. That's, it's popular these days, though. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm not sure that was intended, but we'll we'll go with that. Okay, so so first of all, then, this is a beer brewed with no hops. So, what the aroma is going to be like? Right. Interesting. Let's let's <laughs> see what we think. I'm just getting a lot of malt, and I don't know if it's that rye initially, but I'm not getting any juniper character. It doesn't, no. I, th I think, um, yeah, no boil, and no hops, and berries in there. I mean, it's, it's pretty weird. <laughs> it's pretty weird. So, okay. I guess we should... Uh, I guess we should try this thing. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're letting ourselves in for here. <laughs> Cheers. Wow. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There is a bit of like um, bitterness. Like it isn't like fully sweet. There's like something there. I don't know if it's the juniper or what, but it kind of balances it out a little bit. Yeah. So I was expecting because there were no bittering hops that this is going to be like drinking wort. Um, but no, it's it does actually have a little bit of, yeah, is it bitterness from the from the juniper berries? Something that doesn't make it sort of cloyingly sweet. Yeah, but it does. It does have that. It, there is a bit of sweetness. Like, I mean, the sweetness is there. It's not hiding, which is interesting. And it's it's got like a bit of a thicker mouthfeel, I think, because of it which I think the carbonation is cutting through, but I don't know, you know, it's not something I don't think I can have a bunch of pints of, but by itself, it's pretty interesting. No, completely agree. Very, uh, very sort of heavy mouthfeel because of the, yeah, because of the sweetness. But in, just in terms of, of flavor, can you sort of pick up on the, the, the juniper taste? I get a little bit. It's like, it's a very light hint. It's almost like an herbal thing on the end, I feel like I get. Yeah. I think maybe you could go with I mean, more next time. Next time you brew this, you could go throw a lot of juniper in. <laughs> <laughs> it was a vanishingly small amount of juniper that that went into this thing. 
to to the extent where you know you put it in it's like this can't possibly make any difference yeah so yeah i think you probably could up it a little bit but that said i i feel like had we not added it this would be a very different beer yeah well you know <laughs> i'm pleasantly surprised that <laughs> me too <laughs> We have, we have a product that's actually drinkable and somewhat enjoyable. Thanks so much for all of your work on helping me with this one. Yeah, I appreciate um, it. I had a lot of fun making this one. It was, it was a fun experiment. It definitely was. <laughs> and look, if you've not checked out the brew show, please go give it a look. There's a link in the description and also on the end card here. What sort of stuff you got coming up on the channel? Well, I'm always looking to do some odd experimentation outside of beer. So I have right now, I got some, I'm working on sake, I'm working on hard kombucha. Um, and then, you know, I got all kinds of other beers that I'm working on. So lots in the pipe works. Well, for now, thank you so much for brewing this beer with me and, uh, and enjoying it across <laughs> the country together. Yeah. So cheers. Cheers.